Hey everybody, so I wanted to make a quick video today based on 8.3 and what we can expect from Feral. Now the big question is, is Feral viable? The quick answer is yes. Yes, it is viable. But then again, so is everything in the game. Everything in the game is viable. I think you can easily do a 20 key on any spec in this game. But what the real question is, is the community perception of Feral viable now that's a more difficult question to answer because that takes time and effort to change people's minds on what they've been told and what they've heard and what they've seen now recently dratnos and method have released guides on reviewing the different specs in the game from range to melee dps to healers tanks etc and in this guide dratnos explicitly states that the videos are based around the highest tier of content now what does that mean the highest tier of content would be 24 keys and 25 keys and that kind of area, 26 keys maybe, that kind of area of the game. Now how many people in the world are doing that kind of content? 10 people? 20 people? Something like that, right? So the vast majority of people can kind of dismiss a lot of the imperative nature of, oh, we can only bring this. And I think a lot of people should definitely be more open-minded to what they're bringing to their groups. At the end of the day, it's about bringing the player. Dratnos again says this himself, and I think that a lot more people need to see these caveats when they're watching these videos, and, uh, and I think that's good. I think that's good to be mentioning that kind of thing. So getting straight into it then, how is Feral Druid looking for 8.3? Well, if you've recently checked out Wowhead, then you would see that they have reviewed each of these specs, and they've mentioned under Feral Druid something that I've been saying for a very long time. In short, they basically state that anything that a Feral Druid can do can be covered by a Resto Druid and an Outlaw Rogue. And seeing as Outlaw Rogue and Resto Druid currently in 8.2.5 are the two most required specs in the game for Mythic Plus, then really there isn't a place for Feral Druid currently. However, some of this may change going forward into 8.3. And I'll get into that in just a second. I want to kind of go more into detail into why Resto and Outlaw cover what Feral can do. So if you have a Resto Druid in your group, then that means that you already have a Decurse, you have a Dispel Poison, you have a Soothe, you have Typhoon, you have a Ranged Battle Res, you have Entangling Roots, you have Vortex. So you already cover a lot of the general Druid toolkit. So then, what does Outlaw bring to the table? Well, Outlaw brings a stun, a single target stun as part of their DPS rotation. They don't lose any DPS for doing this stun. In fact, it actually is part of their damage and is that one of their hardest hitting finisher abilities or is their hardest hitting finisher ability. They also have the extended range that Feral Druid replicates. They have damage very similar to Feral Druid. Depending on the player, I would say that Outlaw and Feral Druid damage can be very similar. Now at the highest, highest, highest level of gameplay, potentially Outlaw would just flat out be a Feral Druid. I'd find Feral Druid single target does more often than not be out Rogue single target, but in terms of AoE damage, I'd say Feral Druid is consistent, it is sustained, you have it immediately when you enter combat and there's no drop off. Whereas Rogue, you need to make sure that you've always got a stack of Blade Flurry available, which most of the time is fairly easily doable. Of course, Rogue also has access to things like Shroud and Distract and Blind and Sap. They also have very good defenses like Cheat Death and Cloak, which are very, very strong especially at the higher end level of gameplay. Anything that Outlaw can't do, well, Resto can cover it. So by having a Resto and an Outlaw in your group, well, there's no real need to bring a Feral. Now you can still bring a Boomkin, of course, people still do, but that's mainly for the idea of bringing Trent and Innovate and that kind of thing. Well, going into patch 8.3, it looks like Resto is gonna drop off a little bit, a little bit. It's still most likely going to be the strongest healer. If not, it might start to drop off, but who knows how things change mid to late season. But at least initially, Resto will probably still remain very strong. Now, the other two contenders are Holy Paladin and Mistweaver Monk. If those healers end up being very, very strong and end up beating out Resto in terms of the required healer spot, then suddenly your group loses a Dispel Curse, it loses Soothe, it loses Typhoon, it loses that Range Battle Res, it loses Entangling Roots, it loses a lot of aspects of the general druid toolkit. So at that point, Feral Druid might start to look very strong, especially seeing as Mistweaver Monk is classed as a melee healer and they would provide a melee buff as part of the monk toolkit. Also, if Warrior Tank ends up being the best tank, then you're going to have the attack power buff 
that Warriors provide. So suddenly having a full melee composition looks very, very strong. There are only a couple of dungeons where having full melee is like, it, eh, do not do it. And that is because specific mechanics will target range players specifically. So think of Siege of Bralis with the first boss. If there are no range players in the group, then it causes a whole lot of havoc with the rest of your party. Also in Freehold, with the Shark boss, that is preferable to have a range, as well as with the first boss, it's preferable to have a range. Though, technically, you don't need a range specifically. The Mistweaver can, or Holy Paladin can still stand at range and bait out the mechanics as normal anyway. So really, apart from that, having a full melee composition shouldn't be a problem. You see some groups that are doing 21 keys with no healer and that kind of thing. So it's definitely until you get to the high, high level, I don't think that should really be a problem in terms of a full melee composition, which means that if you're getting a monk buff, you're getting your attack power buff from the warrior, that makes the full composition look really, really strong. And then let's say you bring an outlaw rogue and a demon hunter as two of your DPS players, that covers a lot of the utility. You've got stuns or AoE stuns, you've got sap, blind, shroud, all that kind of thing. You've got darkness, you've got any of the healer cooldowns, depending if it's paladin or misweaver. What you're missing is something like a dispel curse, you're also missing Soothe, of course, Typhoon, Battle Res, as we mentioned. So these things can be very, very strong. And so people will most likely seek these from either a Boomkin or potentially a Feral Druid. Now, most groups, if they can't find a strong enough Boomkin, you know, if you bring a 2k Boomkin or a 2.6k Feral or that kind of thing, suddenly then the Feral won't look so bad. So maybe it'll just work to our favor that if Resto Druid isn't as strong next season, then maybe bringing a Balance slash Feral Druid will be really, really preferable. Of course, there are things like engineering battle res, but have you ever tried to actually use that? You know, have you ever, you gotta be right on the target that's died and it takes a long time to cast, whereas battle res uh, for a druid, you can cast at range and it's quite, quite quick and easy to use. So that's what I really suspect could be a strong contender for going into 8.3. If outlaw and resto are less strong, that in a way kind of, it's a horizontal kind of buff it kind of buffs Feral in a, in a manner, in a way of speaking. I do obviously, of course, expect Boomkin to be very, very strong and probably fill that niche, if so. But who knows? We'll see how it ends up playing out. Of course, there are also things that could be added to the Feral Druid toolkit. If we had, for example, Leader of the Pack, which would be a group-wide critical strike buff, that would be huge, especially if you did do Mistweaver, Monk, Healer, you had Prot Warrior, Tank, and then you had Outlaw and Demon Hunter had this full melee composition, and then you get your crit buff from a Druid or from a Feral Druid. That would be very, very strong. I could see that being very uh, preferable for a lot of groups, and also it would help out with Feral Druids and Raid, though that's a whole different aspect altogether. Also, of course, adding Trents. There was a recent video of Tettles saying, uh, you know, obviously an avid Boomkin player who said that if Feral Druid had Trents, then that for him would be, you know, that would be it. That would be enough to get him over to Feral Druid. So I think for a lot of people, Trent's is the big, even though people go, oh, well, Boomkin does really good single target and it brings Innovate and Solar Beam, blah, blah, blah. Most people go, oh yeah, but if Feral had Trent's, I'd just take, I'd play Feral instead. So I think really it's the Trent's that is the, um, is the big issue with a lot of people in Feral Druid. But let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Do you think, what do you think that Feral Druid needs to be viable? What will it be to be the new meta pick? Let me know what you think in the comments. But yes, overall, Feral is definitely viable. You can play it. Please go out there and play it and enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief overview of how I think Feral Druid is looking going into 8.3, wrapping up the 8.2.5 season. Remember, you can always check me out at twitch.tv slash if you want to check out more from the channel. All right, see you in the next one.